me and Patrick were like, that, it was that physical battle we had. So I didn't see Gerard. I didn't have that hatred for Gerard. I, I wouldn't say I liked him, but I, <laughs> I, hate, I didn't have that hatred for him because maybe he was technically a different type of player to Patrick. I don't know. Well, Man United tried to sign Stevie. Gary went to uh, Stevie's room at England. Oh, yeah. But how, how, would, how would that have worked at oh, Manchester United, oh, you and... Stevie. Well, obviously he would have been the Rezies, wouldn't he, for a while? <laughs> no, but Gary, every time Gary went with the English squad, he'd come back and go, we need to sign Gerard our Rooney. He'd be like, well, we sign all of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just because they ran past Gary in training, yeah, right? you got to yeah. sign him up. But that was, that was Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, all right. Okay. all good. Yeah. Nervous for the weekend? No, not nervous, because no. nothing to be nervous about. No chance. <laughs> Christ almighty, you're joking. Do you disagree? <laughs> <laughs> Steven Gerrard was a better player than Paul Scholes. Three, two, one. Jesus. I, you know, I'm gonna have to disagree, and here we go. <laughs> it's just loyalty, isn't it? The way I always, I always think about this, because it, it always comes up with Scholes, uh, Gerrard uh, and Lampard, Lampard and, and Scholes and, and Lampard won a lot more trophies than Stevie Gerrard. Mm. Obviously playing in better teams, and I always think, well, if you took skulls out of the United team and put Stevie in, would United have won mm. more or less or whatever? And if you took Stevie out of our team and put skulls in our team, would we have won what we mm. have done? And I just think of what Stevie did in that Champions League final and oh, the FA Cup final in 2006. And I just think, I'm, I'm not sure skulls or Frank could have maybe had that impact yeah, on Yeah, I agree. Team. Do you know what? I'm, I, I, I agree, but I, I think it's just down to the fact there's a bit of loyalty. You're supposed to be arguing here. Yeah, 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 no, I am. But you're, you're winning this one. You're putting them good part because I think Steven Gerrard was brilliant. I thought Lampard was brilliant, but it's just that with scores in a few games I played with him, I thought, listen, and I always loved the player who get a, get a goal. But it, would Gerrard be better than Scolesy? I just think with Stevie, obviously I, I played him a lot more and what he did for like, us as a team. If you look team, at my, uh, uh, it's disagree. I didn't say strongly, strongly disagree, disagree. So I've left a little bit of. I just, I, I think Stevie for us when we're playing, it was different. You use that sort of maybe four or five match winners mm. where you're thinking we need a goal, whereas everyone on the team is thinking even when it wasn't going well, Stevie will do some. Yeah. Stevie will do some, and the amount of times he did yeah. and sort of bailed you out, and and also the thing I'd say about Stevie where I'd always put him ahead of other players was. I think he could have been the best player in two or three positions. So I think if he'd played right back his whole career, he played for England, right midfield or mm. number 10 or central midfield. He, he played so many different roles and played at such a high level. So you think of the Champions League final, he starts central midfield, he then goes off the striker and he finishes at right wing back for extra time. And, and the performance he puts in, and I just think that was, that was pretty special. Oh, he was brilliant. He was brilliant. But <laughs> <laughs> no, he was. Jesus, he won me over. I'll be crying in a minute. Come no, on. he was. Yeah, he was done. But it's loyalty has to come into it a little bit. Yeah. Manchester United made a mistake re-signing Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm. Three, two, one. <clears throat> Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? No, I still think Ronaldo. I still think it was it was worth the gamble. Um, at the bigger picture, you're looking. It's not a great signing because of his age and listen, whatever. But I still think he could bring something to the party, and I think he has. But I think whatever's going on around him hasn't been good enough. But I still think Ronaldo could also probably show more better leadership skills. I know he's been upset once or twice when he was left out. He clearly wasn't going to play in all the games. But we still, he's still shown moments, Jamie. He's still shown moments, obviously, to listen to the Tottenham game, some of the European games. Um, but I think it was worth the gamble. It reminds me a little bit of panic. when... There was a panic, wasn't But it? it reminds me a little bit of when Everton got Wayne Rooney, where you know he's not at his best, but whatever, we haven't got too much to shout about, but we've got Rooney back and he, mm. he might do a couple of things. I'm thinking, this is Man United. Man United should be buying someone who's 27, not 37. Mm. Who's the next Ronaldo? And it just smacked of where the club was, of... Yeah this big fanfare of Ronaldo's back, all this excitement, really, everyone knew it wasn't going to push, I, I always felt it was never going to push them any closer to mm. the title, he'd finished second the year before. And having watched Ronaldo, I still think, if you if you're judging all United outfield players, he's still been one of the best, if not the best, because he's the one who's had four or five moments this season where you go, wow. For Ronaldo to be playing at one of the biggest clubs in the world at 37, mm -hmm. and yeah. still having an impact, 
It's unbelievable. Mm. But for Man United to buy Ronaldo, I just thought it was a joke. It sums up maybe all the recruitment and yeah, whatever's just, going on upstairs. It was either a panic because they thought City were going to get him, whether they were kidded by that. This mm. thing of getting Ronaldo back and everyone's excited, the social media, all the fans in the first game. I thought it was a bit embarrassing. But that's, but that's part of the... That's part of Man United's problem. No, I know Van Gaal recently said Man United is a commercial club more than a football club, and the signing was part of that. Mm. It was part of the brand and the share price and all this, but yeah. Uh, but where do you go? Where do you go right now if you're Man United and you've got a 37-year-old Ronaldo who's still got another year to go, a new manager's coming in, and he's going to worry about want to buy a centre forward? I think you're Ronaldo for how great a professional he is and what a player yeah. he's been. I think he could be a problem. I think. I've been disappointed with Ronaldo this season in that, not about the goals, as I know we get mm. goals, but it hasn't gone well for United. Okay, that happens. I'd like to, him to have been more of a leader, if yeah. I'm being honest. I'm not really bothered if he gets the odd goal or something, because his goal record's amazing, yeah, he's a legendary yeah. figure. I just think sometimes, and I look back at even at the Everton game, and throwing his arms up at players, and he was kicking the ball out a couple of times. And we all get frustrated. We all do mm. silly things on the pitch. I'm frustrated, but I'd, I'd love to have seen him being that guy who, who lifted the younger players yeah. up a little bit. And I just think that's probably being lacking a little that's bit. That's disappointing. If you remember yeah. the Brentford game, I don't know if you covered yeah. the Brentford game where he was taken off. And as you said, no problem with a player being upset. That's part of the game. You get frustrated. But the game was going on, and 10, 15 minutes later, the camera would, and he was still upset. And you're like. Mm. But again, Jim, he's looking at the manager. If you're a really strong manager, going, you, sh you sh cut that rubbish out. I can be upset, but you're short in different ways. And I think Ronaldo has not been great on that side of it. I have to say, but I think it goes back to frustration. He goes back to United. They obviously never go back. So he's come back, a bit of a gamble. He's think I'll go back, rekindle the old days or whatever. But as you said, he's 37. He's probably looked around the lads around and probably think we're not up to speed. He knows pr pretty quickly as soon as he comes back, we're not really going to be obviously competing for the league. He's thinking the cup competitions, and as soon as that's all fallen by the wayside, that's where I think his body language has really not been great. Liverpool and City's rivalry over the last three years is the best rivalry in Premier League history. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> uh, I threw a bone out when I, I said I forgot that. about this, man. I just get many times, so... Uh, that didn't I've got to agree, I said it. <laughs> yeah, but you're talking football. See, the game, obviously the game is changing. I think the standard they've set is amazing and fantastic. But you'd still like a bit more nastiness between the two. You know, that was part of the game I loved. When I obviously played against Arsenal, no doubt when Liverpool were having their challenges. Denise, I think I'd like a bit more needle between these two teams, do you? Even yeah. yesterday, the players afterwards, it's all a bit that's where that's where I think rivalry comes in. Whatever with the standard of football and the points total, whatever they are. These two we can't speak highly enough of these two teams, amazing. But I'd like a bit more you know, people look back, obviously United Arsenal, a couple of sending offs, fights in the tunnel, pizzas. We, we want to hear some pizza stories from yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. From when you're seeing, when you're seeing Klopp and Guardiola, the hug yeah, at the end. Yeah, it's just too nice, isn't it? I always found it hard to like. I always had to make myself not like them, even if they were a good lad, mm. or the opponent was, you'd be a, with England mm. with them, they were a good lad. But I almost had to make myself, I don't know how you felt yeah. with yourself, Vieira, you almost had to make yourself not like them. Dislike them, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I never, because oh yeah, my mindset was always in games, like, particularly against Arsenal, that was you're going to war. Yeah. So why would you want to be pals with anybody? Why would you want to, again, I know the stuff people say, it's old school, it's not, I think it's good school. When I see people chat before the game, why would you want to chat to somebody before the game? What do you think they're saying? I don't know. <laughs> like, like people go, oh, well, when I hear people go, oh, but they play for the same national team. I used to play against Irish lads. If I was playing Ronnie Whelan when, when I first came into the forest, why would you chat to somebody? Because we're going to be kicking each other. And same after the game. Go, but when I, when I played against teammates, even ones at Liverpool, say, like, I, I remember playing against Danny Murphy, so good mates of mine, Michael Owen left, he went to. Uh, he come back from Madrid and went to Newcastle. And in my head, going into that game, I'm thinking, I've got to hit them harder. harder. So people, people don't, don't think, think you're being yeah, nice. Exactly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'd be the same. If anyone thought for one minute you were softening up, you go, yeah. no, that's not good for your street cred. As you said, you kicked them harder. But that was the game. We used to have, uh, uh, Gian Arulia was our manager. And we'd have, you know, the tight tunnel at, at Anfield. And before the game, Sky would, you know, show you in the tunnel and you, you'd run out. And he'd look back, and if he caught anyone oh, yeah, speaking yeah, 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 to the yeah. opposition, or you'd, you'd be in trouble. Yeah, or smiling. You'd be in trouble. But I never had that strange enough with Gerard. When I played against Gerard, I remember when he was a young player, uh, he came, 
And I remember saying to him, and, he, and I think he was on the verge of getting sent off, and I remember saying, but I never had that, never that dislike for him like I had for Patrick or maybe some of the City lads. Mm. I don't know whether, because he was a bit, he, what age is Gerard? He's a couple of years younger than me. Uh, so he's a, like, obviously he was a good bit younger, yeah. so maybe I didn't see him as that threat, you know, in terms of physical threat. He was more of a technical player, was Patrick, me and Patrick were like, that, it was that physical battle we had. So I didn't see Gerard. I didn't have that hatred for Gerard. I, I, I wouldn't say I liked him, but I, <laughs> I, hate, I didn't have that hatred for him because maybe he was technically a different type of player to Patrick, I don't know. Well, Man, Man United tried to sign Stevie. Gary went to uh, Stevie's room at England. Oh, yeah. But how, how, would, how would that have worked at Manchester oh, United, you, you and Stevie? Well, obviously he would have been the Rezies, wouldn't he, for a while? <laughs> no, but Gary, every time Gary went with the English squad, he'd come back and go, we need to sign Gerard or Rooney. He'd be like, well, we sign all of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just because they ran past Gary in training, yeah, right? you got to yeah. sign him up. But that was, that was Gary. <laughs> no, but Gerard, I think he would have. I think they were after Patrick for a while. I think there were stories that uh, Patrick was going to come to um, United. I never thought too much of it. Maybe that would have been the end of me. I don't know. I was just, um, no, but obviously that was never going to happen, was it? I can hardly see Gerard leaving Liverpool for United. <laughs> Pep Guardiola could surpass Sir Alex Ferguson as the greatest Premier League manager of all time. Three, two, one. If he stays, if he stays for. Well, the next five, ten years. Obviously, he's talking about he's got what, two years left in his contract. Why couldn't he, Jamie? Just he's in terms, of, in, in terms of numbers. Numbers. The only, the only thing I, I would say on Pep Guardiola is I think he's amazing. He's, he will have the most trophies. He will finish his career as the most successful manager in the history of football. He'll have done it in different countries. The reason why I would still go with Sir Alex Ferguson. Is it not just to do with the Premier League, but the same manager in Jose's one, I think Klopp's one, it's the one thing Pep hasn't done, is almost win with an, an inferior team, or maybe when you're up against the odds. That's the only thing now. <laughs> managing the great players, managing the great teams is, is obviously a skill in, it, mm. in itself. But I think of what sort of Jose winning the Champions League with Porto, or Sir Alex Ferguson, what he did with Aberdeen. Klopp, what he did with sort of Dortmund. I'm not saying all these managers are better than Pep Guardiola, but in terms of Alex Ferguson, how long he was in the Premier League, where Manchester United were when he came in, you know, to be the guy who won that first title and then keep it going, I'd, I'd still have Sir Alex Ferguson mm. ahead of Pep Guardiola. Mm. I think there was a stat yesterday with Pep, if he wins the league this year, has he, has he won 10 of the last 13 league titles, which is amazing, my goodness. Mm. And I know there's an argument he's always, but I think that's his, that's because he's clever. He's not gone to a team that, and people go, well, he's always had money to spend, he's always with the best players, the best players. That's because he's switched on. He's mm. thinking, yeah, I want to work with the best. He even going back to Barcelona, he first got in there with the reserves. Then he's worked with the first. As you said, we still have to win. And people go, well, he's at Barcelona, it's easy to win. No, other, other Barcelona managers haven't won that much. Loads have been sacked. So he's managed that group even well. And of course, he's clever going to Bayern and Man City. How does that feel when you think, well, we've, we've got the best manager? Did you always have that feeling? Uh, probably, yeah. Probably, but it doesn't guarantee you. As you said, you still have to go out and do the business, but it gives you a bit of a chance. The way I look at the managers I played for, but the two outstanding managers, obviously, who, who backed it up with trophies, I suppose, was obviously Brian Clough and Alex Ferguson, is the way I look at it, whatever about their personalities and whatever my relationship with them, I never wanted to let them down. That was the mm. key. I never, and you know it was the same with the other managers, of course, but when you're backing up with trophies, you're looking, and I spent my longest period of time with those two managers, I never wanted to let them down. Whatever about traits they had or the coaching skills, because they actually didn't do much coaching. Now, I'm not saying every player in Nottingham Forest liked Brian Clough or every player at Man United liked Alex Ferguson, but I just know from my own experience, when Brian Clough gave me that chance, I didn't want to let him down, that was it. Brian Clough was Nottingham Forest. He was in a sense at the time, he felt bigger than the club, and you could say the same for Ferguson. Sometimes he'd back you, he'd fight your corner about a contract situation. But ultimately, I kind of lost that respect at the end when I felt, you know, you threw me under the bus. But in, my, in all my playing time there, you have to go out and try and do your best. But then again, Jamie, aren't you supposed to do that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think even if you, I had my stuff with Ireland and Mick McCarthy, but, but I never went out on the pitch, even with disagreements or not happy with certain, and not giving my best. You have to, but yeah, not wanting to let these managers down. You know at times through your career when you had disagreements with managers or you felt they'd let you down in a certain way, do you look back years later and say, well, that's, 
that's the ruthlessness a manager needs, or do you feel you were let down at those times? No, I was let down, yeah, definitely. Not, not, nothing will change my mind on that. No, and, and we talk about disagreements. I, I'm probably looking at two big disagreements in my career. One was at the World Cup, and one was in my time at United. It's not as if it was, you know, you hear about players falling out with managers every week. I, that certainly wasn't me. I was, you ask anyone who's worked with me, I was like, yeah, go. Well, I'd like to think I was low maintenance. I, I thought I was. But come the end when I thought managers are really disrespecting me and throwing me under the bus, that's where I went, no, no, no. So I've never lost a wink of sleep over that, Jamie. I have, honestly. And I, I know, listen, we all do stuff, we look back, we've made mistakes, I've made mistakes, we look back and go, no, I got that. But I, on the kind of big occasions of my career where, again, the World Cup or when I left United, I don't look back at any stage and think, I got that wrong. Absolutely not. But obviously, takes two to tango. <laughs> Roy Keane was the greatest captain in Premier League history. Three, two, <laughs> Jesus, come on, no, 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 come on. I, I have to say that, Jesus Christ. Oh, these, this, I get embarrassed you, you, you just, you, So I, I would say you were the greatest captain in Premier League history. You, you're saying disagree. I, Who else would you say was the, the other sort of ones you looked at and admired? I, I, like, I thought Gerrard was good. I thought uh, Vincent Company done well at Man City. Adams, I thought, no, I think there's, I think the captaincy and the kind of story behind it, and because we had a bit of success, I honestly, I cringe at stuff like this. I just think it's a, a bit over the top. I, I think the other one I would put up there alongside you was I sort of, John Terry, I, I yeah, would, yeah. and I, I always looked at you mm. too as that sort of driving force of, you know, what you'd associate mm. a captain sort of being, maybe in an old fashioned sort of sense mm. of, you know, Screaming and shouting at the referee, their own players, always involved yeah. in the game. But again, but it goes back, if you win one or two trophies, people think they maybe give you more credit than what you deserve. They think, mm -hmm. oh, you led them. You go, oh, led them. Don't worry, they've won a lot. They, they win plenty of games when I'm not playing, or when you leave, they go on to win trophies. It's just, I think when you've got good senior players around, I think that's the key. I, I, it can't be certainly down to one player. I know there's different. Captaincy carries more weight in different sports and cricket, whatever it might be, and even rugby. I think the soccer, once you have five or six good senior players, I think that takes care of it. The key for me as always is train properly and try and be a decent, decent player, and more importantly, is a decent teammate. And not be some idiot around the place. And you know, you you, you might mention there are other captains from other clubs, but I look at other captains of other clubs and and sometimes when I see what they're up to away from football, I don't like all that, Jamie. Not that I've got a halo above my head, but I think when you're a captain, you, you've got to be a kind of decent lad in the dressing room and listen, be, be up for a night out or fight lads' con uh, contracts, you know, if they're up, up for, even a bit of battle or with fight the club. For them on the yeah, night you'll house. fight on them, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> More importantly, yeah. Forget the contract. No, but if you're, you're in the trenches with these lads, and the key, again, the key for me is when you speak to, we mentioned earlier, when you meet, any of your ex-teammates, I hope, and you hope lead the same. When you meet any of your ex-teammates, you hope they look at you and go, you're a decent teammate. You, mm. you aren't perfect, or again, you aren't pals with all of them. And I, I hope the lads I played with it. We saw Tim Howard yesterday, and imagine you look at Tim, you go, we had good memories together, and that was it. And you hope that you were, when you were in the trenches with them, they, they had a bit of respect for you. Was not it, was not it, liking you, but a bit of respect for you. Was it special lifting those trophies as well? Was that something no, that you got too really, much out you know, of? Honestly, it sounds bizarre. I probably shouldn't have been doing this chat. I never got a buzz from all that stuff. I was never... Nah, I remember I think we won the title at Everton one and Lauren Blanc was retired. And I said to the manager, I think, I think I'll let Lauren pick the trophy up, you know, as his lad. The manager was, no, 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 you pick it up, you're the captain. I was like, mm. So I wasn't even bothered with stuff that really wasn't, maybe because I was always thinking, don't enjoy it too much, you know, you know just uh -huh. keep focused and there's always next year and don't let people think you're relaxing. The biggest pressure I found at United, obviously with the captaincy, was small little things like uh, the match days, tickets, lounge tickets, all that, and that came to the captain. I, I'd like to think the game has changed, you know, they have a probably player liaison officer doing all that. But I was, I found that hard, because I, I was usually trying to get about 50 for all the Irish. <laughs> Forget about the game, I'm going to get my ticket sorted out. But then people get in touch going, we actually don't want a ticket for the game, we want a ticket for the lounge. <laughs> They're not even bothered about the match. But yeah, could I enjoy it more? You're the same. No, I wouldn't change anything. But that's why, do you know what, I go back to it, I feel sorry for Maguire. If you go into a big club, it's like, imagine if I came to Man United in 2021, I caught young, and they went, oh, you're the captain. You're going, well, that, that doesn't say much about the rest of the group. Surely someone's got to be at the club a number of years to... Who should be the captain at United now? At United now? now? Oh, well, that's... Should they have one? Yeah, but the fact... No, the fact we've got to discuss or think about is not good. Mm. It's not good. 
well, it's not good that Maguire's got it because, again, he was only new to the club himself a couple of years ago and he's still getting used to it. And all of a sudden, he's got that extra responsibility when he was trying to find his feet. Keane and Richards are a better punditry duo than Neville and Carragher. <laughs> That's a good one, that. Two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read that properly. Yeah. No. Come on. We've been doing it a lot longer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're new to the scene. They're new kids on the block. <laughs> new kids. Yeah. Thanks very let's much. See, let's see them two at Norwich oh, on a Friday night oh, in November. Yeah. Oh, good luck, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get a few answers out of Delia. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's be honest. I, I think whatever that punter, we're all different. Again, different personalities. You're, you and obviously Gary are obviously well, ex well established, well experienced. And you're, you're bloody good at your job, isn't it? And I think people don't realise that when you're doing your job, how good you are. But I think part of my issue is a little bit, I, I still feel like I'm dipping into it. Whereas you are, you and Gary, obviously well established, you know what you're Do doing. Do you enjoy it? Um, <laughs> I don't know, but enjoy it. I, I, I wouldn't go that far. I like watching games and I like giving my opinion. I like working with Sky and ITV and I'm, I feel lucky and but I don't, I still don't feel it is that's my my job, do you know what I mean? Whereas, maybe because I've been involved in a bit of coaching do, and managing. Do you still feel like a, a manager doing punditry waiting to go back into management? I, I did up to recently, but I, I, I almost feel recently, I think that, that them days are over for me now, I think going back into management. I really feel like I'm 50 now, I'm doing the TV, uh, obviously label, I'm more of a pundit now. Um, but no, no, I feel I'm getting my head round it. It's maybe more of a head job that maybe that is the role for me. And over the next few years, I think I can't see a club really giving me a, a real good opportunity uh, to get back into it. So, but I don't mind that either. I'm not fearful of going, well, you might do the TV for the next two or three years. I'm fine with that because I do count my blessings because I know, as you know, there's a lot of ex-players looking to get back into it. And um, yeah, I'm okay with that. We've gone back to this, the punditry, you and Gary, obviously, and if you said, Micah, we do love the game, and we give our opinions. I'm sure not everyone agrees Students with it. Students of the game, aren't we? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I think we love the game, and hopefully that you hope that comes across. And now, again, we go back to it. You're, I'm working with different people, and I enjoy working with different people. And it's just, it's bizarre how people can get upset with a pundit's opinion, isn't it? We go, oh. it's just their opinion, that's all, yeah. is it? I don't care if the man in the but street it, agrees with it. The best thing is when they get upset when you haven't even given an opinion. So I was commentating at uh, City Liverpool, and the, the referee gave a bad decision. Uh, against mm. City, and all the crowd are going bad at me. And I turned, I said, "I'm not the referee." He said, "Well, have a word with him." He's about fifty yards away. I'm like, "Oh, the fans are mad, oh, aren't they?" Honestly. So come on, to Mike Richards. You, no, Mike Richards. Oh, Mike, Mike is a good lad. Obviously, I haven't a clue about football, but he's. Uh, <laughs> but again, he's a decent. Uh, he's a good personality. Great, isn't he? isn't he's, he? a, he's a decent guy. And again, you. I, I, the key for me, I go back into all my. You want to work with good people, aren't you? And, yeah, and he's is good. Gary Neville different in the dressing room as he is on TV? Yeah, Gary was Gary was a lot quieter. I know Gary seems I seems surprised every time I say that, but yeah, he was quiet. But whether he got a bit more vocal after I left, I don't know. Obviously, Gary became the captain, uh, but he seems he seems to have a lot more to say for himself at the moment. But that's Gary again. Gary's a nice guy. He's, Nice, nice background filled with the same. No, they are. And you work with Gary. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's not a joke, Dad. It's, <laughs> Gary's a good guy. And obviously you get on well with him and you come across well and, and that's the key. You know, you, you, I think to answer the, what was the first question? Who is better? If you've got to choose one of the three, or one of the Sky Boys as a number two in management, you're going back into management, you've got to pick one of Carragher, uh, Richards and Neville as your number two. Who are you taking? Um, I'd probably take Jamie, but you said you, you've no interest whatsoever, have you? Getting involved in coaching. No. But personality-wise, I'd probably take uh, I'd probably take Jamie. I think he'd be I think he'd be good with players, be hands-on. Yeah, you, believe it or not, you might enjoy it. You might. You've said that to me before. Yeah, you might. If lads are doing this session, if you you don't have to be a bibs and cones, man. Some people aren't like that, and I'm not like that. But you might like working with players and good young players. If you have a good group. Mm. But if you're with a bad group, like a lot of managers are, that's where it's tough and stressful. I think I'd find that tough if, if I felt there was a group of players yeah. who didn't want to win as much as me. Yeah. And I think you've you, you've spoke to me about that and that, that's something that you find a problem in a dressing room. I found that a problem in my own dressing room when I was a player. Mm. Really, that used to really frustrate me. And I almost, I don't think you can ever want, want to win too much, but that, that was me. It was almost the be all and end all. But if you have a good group, Jamie, yeah. it's the best job in the world, mm. you know? It's the best job, it's great for, Win, lose, or draw, it wouldn't bother me even when I was a player, United, whatever, you wouldn't lose a lot of matches, but as long as you gave everything you have, 
oh, it's great, mm. brilliant, and, and kind of still miss that side of it. But when you've got bad lads in a bad dressing room, oh, it's torture, torture. Gary Neville talks too much. Three, two, one. Easy. <laughs> 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 I've never met anyone like Gary Neville mm. in terms of he just feels like he's got a million things going on at once and, and I, I never even mentioned this to him yesterday but we've been busy we're on the pitch at four o'clock so we do our thing so it's ten past four the game's kicking off at four thirty we've then got to get up so we're getting up through the different lifts we get down we've got to sort our headset on mics so we've probably got two or three minutes and he's got his laptop out up and I'm thinking he's going on the stat pack. So I've just looked what he's doing his email. And he's sending an email over his hotel. And I'm thinking, this game's kicking off in like two or three minutes. And it's like something at the top of St. Michael's. It's something with like a hotel St. Michael's. He's got or something in Manchester. God, and he's reading this email. I'm thinking, what is going on? It I, is, no, just... I, but I admire, I admire Gary. No, oh, I do. Not for that type. Not where you, you, that would annoy me because you think it's five, ten minutes. This is our priority yeah. the game. But he does multitask, and I see him for all his roles, whether it be with Salford, the hotels guy. To me, one of them jobs is your only job, but he's got loads going on. Mm. Now, whether he's missing something upstairs, he's <laughs> he's lacking something, obviously. Sleep. Sle <laughs> yes, sleep. There's a, I think there's a bit of madness to Gary. Yeah. There's definitely a bit of madness that he can, but part of me then, I admire him because he's multitasking. Did he say the other day before the game he just flew back from Miami or something? He just got back from Miami. Miami. He'd been in Qatar the week before. What was he doing in Qatar? What's it's he doing? Something with the World Cup, <laughs> make, trying to make a few shillings. <laughs> so he does. I, I admire where he gets his energy from, but he'd be. What about him now? There's a, there's a new role for him now, isn't he? He's going into politics. Is that what he's gone? Yeah, Gary. Uh, do you see him as, as he, was he like a politician no, in the dressing room? No, I don't sit in dressing room. Gary never, he never said a word. <laughs> <laughs> we all chatting and Gary says, you go, yeah, you be quiet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a full back, you know, it's stay in your lane. <laughs> no, no, he, it's amazing how he's, he's changed. I don't know what's happened to him. But part of me admires him because I'm thinking he's doing all these big jobs. But he'll, he'll crash and burn. <laughs> <laughs> mean, good luck, man. Cheers. Tuesday. Good yep. luck, Cheers. Tuesday. Cheers. Jesus. That was a panic. You're the nervous producer or director, whatever you are. I was all of this. I was all of this. Can you not multitask? No, just uh, oh, hold that and catch it now. Oh, I was so not ready for that. I was so not ready. Hey, that was a good pass from me. I want to see the ones where I used to bobble into for Michael Owen. <laughs>